This is Brett Waltemath of Starwatch Media here at Arclight Cinemas Hollywood for the second season premiere screening of Femme Fatales. Starwatch Media, it's a pleasure to speak with you. Yeah. Uh, we're here for the second season. Uh, second ca season ca ca casting, Fatales. yes, casting crew screening. How's it feel to be here and just see it, uh, another season of Femme Fatales here for the audience to see? No, I'm really excited. I mean, this is one of the few TV shows that blown up on the big screen still holds up and looks awesome. I'm really excited. The first movie I ever saw here was The Arrival with Charlie Sheen. I saw it in the uh, Cinerama Dome. I think I parked my car like right here because this used to be the parking lot. What does that all mean? I don't know, but I'm really excited to be here. I'm like, now I'm at a premiere of a movie or my own show. It's like, it's really great. What were the goals for you, Mr. Altman, uh, when there was discussions of a second season? What, what were the changes that you guys wanted to make going into an additional season? Well, we just wanted to make it bigger and better, and we really pushed ourselves. We have like some crazy episodes. We have a sci-fi episode, a superhero episode that Bob Layton did. Uh, just, you know, trying bigger and better and more and crazier, you know. And just, you know, it's the most creative freedom we've ever had, an anthology show. Like we worked in scripted TV where you have like established characters. So we bring some characters back, but every episode's new. You know, new characters, new situations, new danger. You know, so we want to just, we just want to make the season just like more unpredictable, more crazy. What was that like for you? Uh, also moving into kind of different genres, according to the episode, with kind of the overlying uh, film noir genre, you know, overlaying the entire series. Yeah. Kind of jumping into different episodes. Or different yeah, I mean, like, well, you know, one week we're doing a, uh, you know, a, a, a 40s inspired uh, episode. The next week we're doing something, you know, 80s grindhouse. So it's like no one knows what's going on. Film. And, and as a viewer, it's like each week you're not, you don't know what to expect. You don't know who's going to make it in or out of an episode. You know, network stuff, it's like, well, you know, Mark Harmon's not going to die at NCIS unless he's got a contract dispute. But Femme Fatales, we don't know who's going to make it out. But most likely the guys don't make it out. Right. This show has been described as a tribute not only to film noir but also graphic novels. What are your favorite? What are some of your favorite graphic novels and uh, films in the film noir genre? Well, I mean, I've been reading comic books for a long time. I'm more of a Marvel guy, but I, you know, I like DC as well, and I collect a lot of original comic book art. So that's why you know I've been, I, mean, I knew who Bob Layton was. So I, when I approached him about doing a story for the show, uh, I was pretty excited about that. I'd read his Iron Man back in the day, but I was reading you know you know Claremont and Burns X Men. Who I was into. Uh, I always liked Alpha Flight because they were kind of weird. Uh, Iron Fist was awesome, and uh, you know Jean Grey is like a femme fatale. Uh, you know Black Widow, who is with the Avengers now. You know I always liked the Avengers. I, you know, I gravitate a lot of the Marvel characters. You know, I mean, uh, I remember reading the death of Captain Marvel, which was a graphic novel, which was a pretty emotional one, which was really good. I think, I think that uh, some people tend to mistake this series for being only for guys. That you know, it's only it's only a show that guys can enjoy. When when I feel that women that, you know, uh, it's a show about a, women empowerment as well as you know showing the sensual side of women. What are your kind of what's your take on what women can gain from watching the series? Yeah, I think you know the, the viewership is pretty much 50-50, which we found out. So it's like these are you know strong female characters. You've seen how many girls showed up for this premiere. You know, we give like a lot of these girls, some of them have like one role on Gossip Girl and they come on here and they have like a real awesome part. And it's not just like, it's a great part, like it's a really juicy part. And, uh, you know, we just like to show women empowered, you know, strong, you know, in charge, you know. And, and I think that's why it works as both uh, for both uh, male and female in the, in audiences and stuff like that. And Tiny Phoenix is one of the only really recurring characters throughout the series. Was it always the goal of the show to have kind of that Rod Serling Twilight introduction, intro, outro? Was that always something that you wanted to add to the show? Absolutely. Tanit was always, you know, as Lilith was always in there. Uh, Mark and I, especially myself, are, I'm a big fan of the Twilight Zone. So to have a sexy Rod Serling, let's, but let's put her on camera instead, right? It has a She's fun a little better. I mean, I love Rod Serling, and I'm jealous that he was able to dictate all his scripts. I can't do that. Um, but yeah, it was always the idea. And then we kind of developed her mythology throughout the first season. She'd cameo as a character in the episode. She's sort of like the Watcher in, in the Marvel Comics universe. She sort of knows what's going on, you know, but you're not sure what, how she knows all this stuff. So there's definitely a mythology about her, but it was always, it kind of evolved with the show, like any of these TV shows, like, do we really know where we were going with it? Like, we kind of had an idea. But she was always Disney intros and outros, and then we thought, well, cameo throughout. And then in season one, we tried to wrap it all up in visions on what her origin was. And there's a lot of debate on just kind of the mystique of her character, and if there's kind of an underlying aspect of her character. Some say that she may be the devil <laughs> herself. Her name's Lilith, so it's like, you know, it's a little on the nose maybe, but there might be something going on, and you may see her father at one point, you know? So we'll see. So yeah, it's a whole, you know, so second season is, is just rocks, you know, it's going to be great. Any other projects for you, sir? Any other projects for me? Uh, let's see, Mark and I have a, a TV pilot at USA Network. So we'll see if that goes. And uh, we wrote a graphic novel called Elvis Van Helsing. 
that uh, so it's our give back to the comic book universe. So you know maybe a young kid will read it and be like inspired to like you know work in television because it's really that easy, huh? Thank you so much for the time, sir. Such a pleasure. Congratulations on the series. Right, cool. Enjoy the screening. Thank you so much.